In this video, I'm going to go through review one for the circles unit. And remember, there are lots of little rules that we need to remember here for uh, angles and segments. So just as a quick summary, remember that if I have a central angle where its vertex is at the center and the two rays lie somewhere on the circle where they end, then the arc that is intercepted by the angle is the same as the measure of the angle. However, for an inscribed angle, where the vertex is on the edge of the circle, the angle is equal to half whatever the intersected arc is. Now, a special kind of inscribed angle has endpoints on the diameter and a vertex on the edge of the circle. In this case, that's always going to be a right angle. That was something called Thales' theorem that we worked with a little bit earlier. And the reason that happens is because if AC is a diameter, that must mean that arc AC is 180 degrees. And if I take half of that, because the inscribed angle is half the arc, that's how I get that 90 degrees there. One other rule is that for an inscribed quadrilateral in a circle, the opposite angles should be supplementary, so they sum to 180. And if I don't have a central angle or an inscribed angle, and I just have two chords intersecting to form pairs of vertical angles, then we proved this based off of similar triangles, but the rule we memorized was that that vertical angle is equal to the sum of the intercepted arcs divided by 2. That's for an inside angle, as opposed to if I have an outside angle created by two tangents, two secants, or a tangent and a secant, that's going to be the big arc that's created by the angle minus the little arc divided by 2. Again, there was a similar triangles argument to be made here, but we'll just use the rule that that comes from. In terms of segment rules, there was three big ones we needed to worry about. If I have two intersecting chords, then it must be the case that when I multiply the partitions across, part times part, A times B, that's going to be equal to C times D. For secants, I can make an argument that the outside piece times the whole for one of the secants is equal to the outside piece times the whole for the other secant, as opposed to when I have a tangent in a secant, where it's still outside times whole equals outside times whole, but the problem is the outside for a tangent is the same as the whole length of the segment. So sometimes you'll see it written as tangent squared equals outer times whole. Now, I know this is a lot of little rules to memorize, and they're all generally proven by similar triangles, but these are what we're going to have to have in our back pocket when we're looking at different problems to know which rule to apply here. So let's go through review one. First thing I'm going to look at is this circle with a central angle, BOA. I know that the arc from B, C, A is 280 degrees. And all the arcs in a circle should sum to 360. To, so to find the missing arc BA there that would help me get the central angle, I can just subtract 280 to find that the missing arc AB is just 80 degrees. Now, this is a central angle, and the arc is the same as the central angle. So I could say that my missing angle BOA is 80 degrees here for B. I see a lot of central angles here, and I care about angle E, D, F. Well, I know that arc E, I is 135 degrees, but I also can see that I, F here goes through the center, so that must be a diameter. So the whole arc from I to F should be 180 degrees. So if I subtract what I already have, I find that arc EF is 45 degrees, and the corresponding central angle should be the same as the arc it intercepts. So the measure of angle EDF there is 45 degrees. For C, I do not see a central angle. I see an inscribed angle that has the vertex on the circle and intercepts arc AB. Remember the rule here is that the angle is just half the arc. So the measure of angle ACB is 24 degrees. But for D, I've got two different things going on. I've got a central angle that's 50 degrees, and I've got an inscribed angle ACB that I'm looking for. 
Well, they both intercept this arc of AB, and if I know the central angle is 50, the measure of the arc that it intercepts should be exactly the same. So that should be 50 degrees as well. And if I know the arc that it intercepts, try to picture this right here. If I didn't have that central angle right there, I would just have an inscribed angle that intercepts that arc. And this becomes very similar to the last problem we just did, where I could just take half of the arc, and that's going to give me whatever the inscribed angle is. So even though we have another angle there, that's, that central angle and the inscribed angle still both intercept the arc of AB. Now for E, I'm looking for the measure of angle BCD right there. And this is an inscribed quadrilateral in a circle. And I know that opposite angles are supplementary, which means they sum to 180. So I can just subtract from 180 to find that missing angle there. For F, I have an inscribed angle of 35 degrees. So I can double that to find the arc it intercepts to get 70 degrees. And I notice I know arc RS. I figured out arc ST. I'm only missing this arc RT down here. So if I know all the arcs must sum to 100, or excuse me, 360 degrees together, I can add the arcs I already have and subtract those from 360 to find that my missing arc RT should just be 145 degrees there. For G, I see a triangle, but I also notice that all three of these angles are inscribed. So I'm going to apply my knowledge of inscribed angles. Angle QRS intercepts arc QS. So if I double my inscribed angle of 51, I can find that that arc from Q to S is 102. Now, I also know that the arc SR is 106. So one thing I can do here, and this is not the only way to solve this, I could figure out the measure of arc QR by subtracting the arcs I already have from 360 degrees. So I could say, well, the measure of arc QR is 152 degrees, and angle S intercepts that arc. So I could just take half of the measure of that arc to find that the measure of angle QRS is 76 degrees. That's one way to do it. Another route you can go through that's probably the same amount of steps is to recognize that angle Q intercepts an arc of 106 degrees. So if I cut that in half, I could find that angle to be 52 degrees. And now QRS is just a triangle. And all the angles in a triangle should sum to um, 180 degrees. So I could just subtract from 180 there. Oh, excuse me, that should be what, 53 degrees, right? But it's still the same concept. For H, I have an inscribed angle of 56 degrees for JLD, and I wanna find the arc for LD. Well, I know I could find arc JD by doubling that 56 to get 112 degrees. And now I notice the JL is a diameter. So the arc from J to L, because it's cutting the circle in half, should be 180 degrees altogether. So I'm going to apply that to subtract from 180 to find that my missing angle should be 68 degrees. And that's the arc I'm looking at. For number two, in the accompanying diagram of circle O, the ratio of arc BC to AB is 2 to 1. And I want to find the measure of angle ACB right there. Well, I could label arc AB as 1x, and I could label arc BC as 2x. And if AC is a diameter, I know both those arcs summed together should be 180 degrees. So if I divide out the 3, I find that each of my pieces should be 60 degrees in size. So if I substitute that back in, I know that arc AB is 60 degrees and that arc BC is 120 degrees. So if I'm looking for this inscribed angle at C, I can just take half of 60 to find that, that angle is 30 degrees. For number three, in circle O, chords AB and CD are parallel, and BD is the diameter of the circle. If the measure of arc AD is 60 degrees, find the measure of angle that should say B, D, C. So right there. Well, 
I'm noticing I have congruent alternate interior angles here because I've got a set of parallel segments and that forms a Z. And I know angle ABD should just be 30 degrees because that's half of 60 and that should be congruent to BDC. So the measure of angle BDC just based off of alternate interior angles should be 30 degrees. For number four, I have two intersecting chords, so it's not a central angle, it's not an inscribed angle. And remember the rule for the angles is just the sum of the arcs divided by two. And here I have both the arcs, so my vertical angle x should just be equal to 54 degrees plus 32 degrees over two. And if I simplify that in my calculator, I find that that vertical angle is 43 degrees. For number five, in the diagram below circle O, I've got two chords intersecting again, but now what I'm looking for is the arc DB. So it's still the case that my vertical angle is equal to the sum of the arcs divided by two. The problem is I'm missing one of the arcs. I know what the vertical angle should be. I'm missing one of my arcs, but I know that the other arc is 72. So notice my x is in a different place, so solving for x is going to take a little bit more work here. The first thing I look at is that division by 2. If I'm trying to think about inverse operations, the opposite of dividing by 2 would be multiplying by 2. So I'm going to start by multiplying both sides of my equation by 2. I'm just left with the numerator on the right-hand side. That's the whole reason why I do that. If I'm multiplying and dividing by 2, those cancel each other out. And 2 times 58 is just 116. So now this is just a one-step equation where I can subtract the 72 on both sides, and I find that my missing arc db is just 44 degrees. Number six, AD is tangent to circle to the circle at D, and ABC is a secant. So remember, a secant intersects a circle twice, and a tangent just bounces off, it intersects once. I know arc DC is 120 degrees, that's that arc right there. And the measure of arc CB is 170 degrees. And I want to find the measure of angle A. Well, in order to do that, this is an outside angle. And I know, know the rule is big arc minus small arc over 2. So I would need to know this arc, and I would need to know arc DB. Uh, the good news I, is I have a means of figuring out arc DB, right? Because I have two arcs of the circle. So I already have 290 degrees covered around the circle. And if I subtract that from 360, I find that the measure of arc db should just be 70 degrees right there. So that's going to be what my small arc is. So my outside angle is just equal to whatever my big arc is minus my small arc over 2. So I don't know what that angle is, but I know that my larger arc is 120. The smaller arc that I just found is 70. And when I subtract those and divide by 2, I find that my missing angle outside is 25 degrees. Now for number 7, it's a similar concept where I have an outside angle, I have a big arc BD, I just need to do a little bit of work to figure out my small arc though, from B to D. So what I could do is again, notice that both these arcs cover the whole circle. I have a major arc there and a minor arc there. So if I subtract 241 from 360, I find that arc BD, the minor arc at least, is 119 degrees. So my angle is represented by 5x plus 1. And that should be equal to the difference of my arcs divided by 2. So there's going to be a little bit more grunt work here in solving for x. If I simplify that right-hand side, I'm just taking 122 dividing it by 2. So that really just simplifies the 61, and now this is just a two-step equation. I can subtract the 1 on both sides, and to get rid of a multiplication by 5, I can divide by 5 to find that x is equal to 12. Now it doesn't ask me to do anything else, it just asks me to solve for x, but if I wanted to find angle c, I would just have to plug back in there. So make sure you're reading so that you actually solve for what you're tasked in solving for. For number 8. Find TV. Well, I have intersecting chords, and I have lengths marked. So remember, this is one of those part times part. 
equals part times part problems. So I could take 14x multiplied by 8. That should be equal to 16 times 7. If I multiply the coefficients there, I have 112x equals 112. And if I divide out the 112, this works out pretty nicely to find that x equals 1. Be careful, though. I didn't just ask for x. I want the value of tv. So this entire distance from t to v. Well, tv is just represented by whatever 14x is plus 8. And we've figured out what x is. So I can make that substitution there. So that's just 14 times 1 plus 8. Or if I simplify, the whole length from t to v should just be 22. For number 9, it's a very similar process. There's just a little bit more algebra we got to do. It's still part times part equals part times part, but just be careful about the setup. So I'm going to be careful with my parentheses here. I'll say part times part equals part times part. The reason I kept my parentheses there is to remind myself to distribute because I'm multiplying one term to two terms. So 5 times x is 5x. Five, 5 times 1 is 5. 6 times negative 1 is negative 6, and 6 times x is 6x. I'm going to add 6 to both sides, just to get rid of that minus 6 there. And I have 5x plus 11 equals 6x. If I subtract the 5x on both sides, I find that x equals 11. Now again, be careful, that's not what I asked for here. I asked for the whole length from q to s. Well, from f to s, if I take negative 1 and add x to it, that should be 10. And q to f is 6. So if I add those together, I find the qs is just 10 plus 6, or 16. On to the last page for number 10. I want to find the length of bc. Well, these are two secant lines, and I have segment lengths marked. So this is one of the outside times whole equals outside times whole arguments. So if I look at secant BD, my outside length is 8, but my entire length would be x minus 3 plus 8 if I sum those two pieces together. So if I combine those like terms there, I can just write that entire length BD as x plus 5. So that's the whole length of my secant line on the left side. For the secant line on my right side, the outside piece is 7, and the whole piece can be represented as x plus 7 if I sum those two parts there. So again, there's a little bit of distribution i got to do here. 8 times x is 8x. 8, 8 times 5 is 40. 7 times x is 7x. And 7 times 7 is 49. I can subtract out the 40 to combine my constants. And you could do this all in one step, but usually I like to show it in two. And if I subtract my 7x over, 8x minus 7x is just 1x, or just x. So I find that x equals 9, but they want me to find bc, which is just represented by x minus 3. So if I subtract 3 from it, I find that bc equals 6. Number 11. In circle O, secants adb and AEC are drawn from an external point A. So I'm just going to start by sketching a circle there and try to get this down on paper. So I've got a circle, and this might not necessarily be drawn to scale because I don't know what these lengths are, but I've got two secants. So I'm going to draw a secant like there. So it should go through twice. And a secant somewhere like right there, where it also goes through twice. One of my secants is A, D, B. So if that's the order of the letters in the segment, that's how they should appear when I look down the segment. And my other secant is A, E, C. Then it gives me some length. It tells me that AD is 8, AE is 6, and that EC is 12 more than the length of BD. Remember, more than is just going to represent addition. So if I know the length of BD, then I could just add 12 to that. So I'm going to label BD as X, because I don't know who he is. But I know that EC should be 12 more than that. So 
So I'm going to start labeling now. This looks like another outside times whole equals outside times whole because I have two secants. Well, for AC, my outside piece is 6, but the whole length from A to C should be x plus 12 plus 6. But I think it would make more sense to combine those constants there, so I'll just write it as x plus 18. For my secant AB, my outside piece is 8, and I could represent the whole length from A to B as just x plus 8. Now I'm going to distribute again into my parentheses, and there's just a little bit of algebra i got to do here. 6 times 18 is 108, and I get 8x plus 64. If I subtract my 6x over, and I subtract my 64 over to combine everything, again, you don't have to do this all in one step. Uh, it might be easier to see if you do it in two steps. But what I'm doing is I'm combining my constants. So 108 minus 64 is 44. And I'm combining my variable terms. 8x minus 6x is 2x. When I divide out the 2, I find that x is equal to 22. And that's what I was looking for anyway because they want the length of BD, and I labeled BD as x. So there's no more work I need to do there. I don't need to plug back in. For the last example, number 12, in the diagram of circle O, I've got a secant and a tangent drawn. If CA is 12.5, so that whole length is 12.5, CB is 4.5, and now if you're thinking here there's more you could label, I could label AB as 8 because they both need to sum to 12.5. So I could just subtract there to figure out my missing piece AB is 8. And it wants me to find the length of AD. So for a tangent and a secant, the rule is that the tangent squared should be equal to the outside times whole. This is really the same rule, but the outside and the whole are the same here. So I'm just multiplying, in this case, x times x, or x squared. My outside piece AB is 8. My whole length of the secant is 12.5. If I multiply 8 and 12.5, I get 100. And that works out nicely, because I know to undo a square, I'm going to have to take a square root. And 100 is a perfect square, because 10 times 10 is 100. So the missing length of my secant should just be 10.